Today we are exploring the Shibuya neighborhood in Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo is made up of a variety of different neighborhoods or districts or even little cities. And Shibuya is one of the most popular for tourists. One of the well-known destinations here is Shibuya Crossing, which is a very busy intersection that can see up to two to three thousand people crossing at each time. So it's very busy. Um, it's a fun place to, to see. It's very much like Times Square. It's been compared to like, it's like the Asian version of Times Square a little bit. So definitely be fun to come back and check out at night. That is on our list to do today as well. Right by the Shibuya station is the statue of Hachiko, which is a dog who was well known because he would come to the station with his owner when he'd go to work and then go home with him at, when he came back. But one time his owner didn't come back from work because he passed away and so he would come every day for nine years to wait for his owner. And so just such a the heartbreaking story. They built a statue of him and it's a very popular destination. <laughs> At least this morning there's been a line to take a picture with him. So that's a fun spot to check out. And then there's a Starbucks right above that has great views of the crossing. So we are going to check that out and see if we can get a spot to walk, people watch from above. So we went into the Starbucks and you may have to wait a little bit to get a seat. Um, it was pretty crowded in the morning, but by the time we we're actually leaving around 10.30, it was actually a lot calmer. So maybe later in the afternoon, um, it'll be less busy. There is another cafe across the street that I noticed that we didn't go to. So there looks like there's a variety of different places you can go to watch from above. Um, now we're gonna do some shopping in the area. There's a Zara nearby and a really fun looking Disney store. I love Disney. So of course have to check out the Disney store. So it'd be fun to do some shopping and check out some stores in the area, depending on what you're interested in. shopping we actually ended up pretty hungry so before we headed over to Yoyogi Park we stopped to eat and have lunch at Ichiran uh, Ramen which is one of the most famous ramen chains there's Ichiran and there's another one called Ipudo um, you go in and you order on the little kiosk stall it prints you out your ticket that you need to save so hold on to that then you may have to wait in line for them to seat you and you sit at these individual single like counters that have like a wall in between so you can't like necessarily you don't have to talk to anyone they will bring you you put your paper down you have to circle all like the things that you want in the broth like how spicy you want it and how thick or to, um, how cooked you want the noodles all of these customizations we just did like medium on everything because we didn't really know um, and gave it to them and you put your ticket on there they come take it and then they bring you your food and ramen costs anywhere from like 960 yen to about 1600, depending what you want in it and all your toppings and things like that. And then after you finish, you still probably have some broth left. So you could order more noodles or pork or extra things as well. So it was really fun. It was actually my first time having ramen that from like a restaurant. So I had a good time. I thought it was really fun. It's nice that you can order on the kiosk. You don't really have to talk to anyone necessarily. It does help to know like the process a little bit. We uh, we're not super familiar with it, but it was easy enough and would highly recommend eating ramen, of course, when in Tokyo. Now we're gonna head off to the park and the shrine.
Yoyogi Park was a great place to kind of escape from the loudness of you know, Shibuya and the cr crossing and the shopping and all of that. It's a nice park. It's pretty large. We only walked through about half of it. It would be really pretty in the spring or summer when there's like leaves on the trees and the cherry blossoms are blooming. We did find a little section with like eight trees that had cherry blossoms and it was super popular, but it was really pretty. And then there's a little lake that you can hang out at and some bird watching areas. So fun park, definitely. It's right next to the Meiji Shrine, which is a beautiful shrine for the Emperor Meiji and his Empress. Um, it's a little bit different than the Buddhist temple we went to yesterday. You can still get like a fortune, but you also, there's different things you can do at this one. You can still buy the charms and the fortunes. You can also buy like a little wooden tablet to write your wish on and hang on the, um, the area they have for that. You can also write like a prayer down on a piece of paper and stick a little bit of money in there and they will present it at, during the ritual for that. So it's definitely a cool experience, a little bit different than the other temple that we went to. So I'd recommend seeing it. It's really pretty. The forest area around is beautiful. There's another place that you can enter that has a 500 yen cost. So we didn't go in there, but it has like ponds and gardens as well. I imagine the gardens would be prettier in the spring and summer when there's flowers. So now we're gonna finish up our day on Harajuku Street. This is actually a street we came to when we very first got here. It's a great shopping area and lots of little food stalls as well. It's supposed to be like the capital of Kauai culture and fashion. So a fun place to wander and shop and eat. Harajuku neighborhood, Takeshita Street is like the famous street. There's lots of shopping and food there. Um, there's a, one of the biggest daisos in Tokyo is there, which is a super fun, like everything's around 110 yen or a little bit more depending on what it is, but it's a fun place to find little souvenirs. They have Sanrio and Pokemon and Disney. So lots of like character items as well. Uh, we got this really long potato that was really good. Uh, we've had crepes there a couple nights ago and the lines were crazy tonight so very popular they have cute ice cream and candy and um, cotton candy just super cute things I really wanted to get this ice cream in the shape of animals but it was closed unfortunately so we may have to make another trip um, once you leave Takeshita Street there is um, directly across from like the exit there is a bunch of shoe stores so Nephi was in heaven just looking at all of these different basketball shoes and shoes that they have and there's just tons of shopping in this area and it's really fun to check out um, hopefully you have really enjoyed this kind of guide of what to do in Shibuya neighborhood in Tokyo Japan we're gonna go get some dinner and finish up our day before heading back to check out Shibuya crossing at night and this place has the best Japanese pot stickers it's um, like two dollars and fifty cents for six and so super cheap so good I could eat a million we actually ate here our first night and we are back again because we loved it so much it's in the hottest Juko neighborhood of Shibuya um, would highly recommend it I'll put the name down in the description and here on the screen for you guys and just would definitely recommend checking out so this was our second day exploring neighborhoods of Tokyo we're gonna do one more tomorrow in the morning before we head out to see Mount Fuji so don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be alerted to all of our other guides and adventures